I've been um, taking calls and taking emails and so have my staff from our patients. And we know that everyone is stressed and scared and worried about what might happen to them or their, or their families uh, because of COVID-19. So I thought it would be a good idea to help you have some counseling, brief counseling, but counseling on things that you can do to not feel stressed and to calm down and enjoy this period of time when you're not working, hopefully. So I'd like you to listen to an expert in counseling, Brett Newcomb. He's a licensed counselor, and I, he uh, kind of moonlights as, as a HealthCast um, co-host. And he will tell you what will help you and how to think about this whole experience so that you don't lose yourself over this. And you, don't, and you don't get sick because you're stressed. We want you to feel calm. So, Brett, can you help, help my patients and I our listeners? I hope so. It's, I've actually had a couple of opportunities to do this with, with a couple of different podcasts, and I've done a lot of reading about it. One of the things that comes to mind is to recognize that part of what we're dealing with is grief. We are grieving over our loss of our regular routine, we're grieving over our anticipation of financial disaster. And those of us who are of an age and at high risk, we're grieving about whether or not this is going to be the end of our life. Mm -hmm. And so the grief is adding levels of anxiety, and that all increases our stress. So you have to find a way to do some reality testing. And there are things that you can do to help calm yourself down, not solve these problems. It doesn't solve the problem of whether you're going to get a paycheck or whether you're going to get sick or whether your kids are going to be okay. But it solves the problem or it addresses the problem of how do you get through the day. And there are, you, I would say, follow a schedule as much and as often as you can. Go to bed at a regular time. Get up at a regular time. During the day, whatever it is that you're spending your time doing, whether it's, it's being on the Internet, watching television, reading books, uh, doing things around the house, if you have children at home, there are things that need to be thought about. And part of what you need to think about is take a break meditate, calm yourself down, do some deep breathing. Uh, if you have any books of meditations, do those meditations. If you have uh, the internet, you can do uh, yoga exercises and, and other stretching exercises that you can download off the internet and do in your own home. You don't need equipment for that. It's important that you eat as healthily as you can and not just eat comfort food. Don't just eat sugar and starch. Um, it's important that you exercise some. But it's important that you think outside the box. How am I going to entertain my children at home when they're not able to go to school? How am I going to entertain my husband at home when he's not able to go to work or I'm not able to go to work? People are in environments that they're not used to being in, and those become stressful. If you are in a relationship with somebody and they're living with you and you're going to be together 24-7 for 14 to 21 days, you need to think about it before you reach a crisis point. If we get upset with one another, if we get irritated, if suddenly your crunching ice drives me nuts and I want to slap you, you know, then if I know that that is likely to be a concern, we can talk about it ahead of time. If, if something that I'm doing irritates you, can you talk to me about it in this way that's hearable rather than accusatively or angrily or reactively? Be moderate. Be calm. Talk. Think. Think about how you spend your time, what's getting you upset. Think about your schedule, your diet your exercise, try to think creatively about things that you can do around the house that maybe you haven't done, uh, and, and get your kids to do things that are not school-related. Now, school teachers everywhere are going to be telling you, oh, they need to focus on their schooling, they need to be in school <clears throat> eight hours a day. B.S. What matters when those kids come back to school is that they have good mental health. Whatever they didn't learn about American history or geometry or calculus over this two- or three-week period that can be regained and recovered, even if they lost part of that, which in grade school, you go home for the summer after first grade, you come back, there's, there's, a, there's a drop in what you retained about what you learned in first grade. So the same thing will happen here. If you've dropped a stitch, when you go back to school, they'll help you pick it up. What you need to do as parents living in a household with these children is make sure that they are as mentally grounded as they can be. So teach them things that they don't learn in school. Teach them how to iron a shirt. Teach them how to cook dinner, how to make biscuits, uh, how to do the laundry. How to sew. How to sew. How to sew masks. Make yeah. a contribution. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are all kinds of creative things that people are doing that you can mm -hmm. find on the Internet. But mainly, my message to you is be calm, 
be thoughtful, be ordered, reality test. Don't just follow the news 24 seven because you get so agitated and so distressed and mm -hmm. so afraid. Just accelerates all this stuff. So turn the TV off sometimes. Go for a walk if you can, if you can get outside. Calm down, think, talk gently, make a plan, follow the plan. Just like they say in AA, one day at a time, one step at a time. That's what you need to do. I like, I like to um, set a schedule for, I mean, I've been working alone, but right. doing consults over, over online, but I like to have a schedule for the day that mm -hmm. I follow. And it's important, Kathy. that is because I usually have appointments, appointments, appointments. Yeah. This is on the days that I am not working and I am home, then those schedules keep me grounded. And then the other thing is I always say, so what's happened to me now? How has anything happened to me yet? Well, because we awfulize. Nothing. Our anxiety makes us awfulize it. And you ask, right. well, what do you mean? Has that really happened? Did anybody die? You know? Right. We haven't, you know, we haven't felt the crisis in our home. And, and God love you if you have. But, but, and our, and our staff is healthy and their families are healthy at home. However, you still have that fear and the yeah. fear is like, it's happening to you right now and it may never happen to you. Right. And it probably will not because the number of illnesses, the number of deaths compared to our population is very small. So, so far. So we need to be doing this. We need to stay at home as much as we can and Nothing has happened to us yet. I mean, Remember it, we aren't starving. One last thing. If you are spiritual, if you have a spiritual foundation, if mm -hmm. you are religious at all, the studies show, my experience with patients shows, if you have that to lean on in times of trouble, you get through the times of trouble mm -hmm. more readily, more easily than people that don't have it. So if you are spiritual, remember, follow spiritual practices mm -hmm. at home. Read your Bible, your Torah, your Koran, read whatever you have to read that reconnects you with those messages. Look online. Most churches, most faiths are offering online services for people to attend. Prayers, meditations. Think in terms of those things too. I read the Bible and and know that whatever's I feel that whatever's supposed to happen to me will, but I still have to lead my life as as I'm told to lead it by the government, the government is, right. is given to us by God. And so we have to do what we're supposed to do uh, according to those rules. So because I'm spiritual doesn't may, mean I'm above the law. No. doesn't mean nothing will happen to me. It just means that nothing's going to happen to me that God hasn't allowed. And so and it, if he's in charge, I'm okay. It's a valuable resource to use if you have it. There are mm -hmm. many people that don't have it. But if you do, use it. Lean on it. Be calm. Be still, think, uh, take care, be well. Be optimistic.